Hello, my name is Tyler. Welcome to balance class. We're going to be doing about five minutes of warm up, 15 to 20 minutes of balance, and then we are going to stretch at the end. So let's get warmed up. Let's start with a seated march. Get moving. Our warm up is going to be completely seated, and then we will stand. Please feel free to hold it onto a chair, have something to support you, whether it be a walking device, um, a table, a uh, couch, anything that's solid that can hold up your weight just in case you feel a little uncomfortable with your balance, you have something to fall back on. Um, I would not suggest using an animal, you can if you really want to, but I would not suggest that. Get some higher steps, a little bit slower. Couple more steps, keep it going. And let's march out wide, open up the legs, continue marching. Activate the hips a little bit, come back in, and back out. Come back in, and back out. One more time, in and out. Excellent, and break, lift up on your toes, activate your calf muscles, get them warmed up as well. Excellent break here. Sit up nice and tall. Keep your back off the back rest of the chair. And we're going to warm up the front of our shins, our interior tibialis. So the opposite of our calf muscles is lifting up your toes now, keeping the heels planted on the ground. And try to pick up the pace. Go as fast as you can. There's five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Lift them on the toes. Again, reactivate the calf. That's going to stretch out the anterior tibialis a little bit. It's going to help relieve some of that stress if that was difficult to do. Excellent. We're going to move into our sit to stand. We're going to do five sit to stands. On the fifth one, you can stay standing. We're going to go behind our chair and we're going to start our balance. And we're going to start our balance training. So, sitting forward in the chair, as hard as you can, sitting up nice and straight. Feet about shoulder width apart, so nice and wide. Make sure knees are aligned with your feet. I don't want your knees way out or your knees especially dipping in because this is really easy to do. Make sure your knees are aligned with your feet. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. So I'm going to show you some modifications and then I will let you go ahead and work on your sit to stand. So you can either cross your hands over your chest, lean forward, nose over toes, weight into the heels, and stand up. This is option number one. Option number two is the exact same idea, but this time hands are out in front. Option number three is hands on the knees and using your knees as support to help yourself up. Now, if any of these are difficult, maybe you have difficulty standing, what I'd like you to do is either use your chair or whatever you're sitting in or your knees and try to activate your muscles and get about an inch off the chair and come back down. Just a simple motion is activating my quad muscles and, and uh, getting them ready for when I do feel comfortable and when I build those muscles enough that I feel comfortable to fully stand. So go ahead and choose the modification that feels best for you. Again, we're going to do five of them. On the fifth one, stay standing. Choose the modification that feels best for you. Nose over toes, hinging at the hips, weight to the heels, stand up. And back down nice and slow, no plopping in your chair. Here's three. 
and four. On this one, go down really slow. Take your time, activate those quads and glutes, and sit down. Excellent. Number five, and stay standing on this one. Go ahead and get to the side or behind your chair. Scoot mine a little bit closer so you can still see me in the camera. Stand up nice and tall. We're going to start basic balance and we're going to slowly get more advanced as we go. Make sure whatever you're using for a balance support is always next to you. Don't let it get far enough away that if you lose your balance, you can't hold on to it. And I will give proper modifications for every single one of these exercises that we do. So let's start with our rhomboid, excuse me, not rhomboid, rhomboid stance. Feet together, stand nice and tall. If you can, try crossing your hands over your chest. This is going to be the most difficult move of the Romberg stance. If you need support, try placing one hand on your chair, but challenge yourself today. So if you normally do one hand on the chair, try taking off a couple fingers. That'll make it a little more difficult. If you normally have two hands on the chair, again, try taking out one hand off or just a couple of fingers off, holding them in this position. If you can, try crossing your hands over your chest for the complete Romberg stance. If you'd like to advance this move a little bit more, feel free to by closing one of your eyes, still holding this position as best you can. Even if you're holding onto a chair, if you don't feel confident crossing your hands over your chest, completely letting, completely letting go, if you are feeling pretty confident holding on with either one or two hands on the chair, you can also try closing one of your eyes to make it a little more difficult for yourself so that way it's challenging, but not so challenging that you lose your balance. If you've got one of your eyes closed, go ahead and switch eyes. Still holding this position, you may notice your balance is a little bit better with one eye open compared to the other. That's okay, that's perfectly normal. It's good to note about yourself. And it's something that you can definitely work on as we continue with the balance training, but nothing that's going to be detrimental, of course, to you. Excellent. Well, uh, open up your feet. Let's try to do a standing march. You're going to involve your arms. We're going to balance. Feel free again to hold onto your chair. Just swim one of your arms. That's okay. Try to activate those muscles. Work on standing. Work on that standing balance. If you can, try to pick it up a little bit. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Excellent. Let's go to our tandem stance. One foot directly in front of the other. If you'd like to, separate your feet just slightly so they're not directly in front of each other, but one still up front. If you can, place your heel right next to your toes, holding this position, try to uh, evenly distribute the weight between both feet. Again, if you need one hand on the chair, please put your hand on the chair. I've got my chair right next to me, so in case I do lose my balance, I can grab onto it and it's going to support me. Stand up nice and straight. If you'd like to, again, you can cross your hands over your chest to make this a little more difficult. If you're feeling very confident in this tandem balance, try doing a body rotation. Keep your hips in place, just rotating your upper body. So go ahead and choose whatever feels best for you. Hold this position. A couple more seconds, almost there. Try to hold this as best you can. Excellent. Switch sides. Other foot now up front. Again, if right the foot right in front of the other is not comfortable for you, go ahead and separate just slightly so we get a semi tandem stance. If you can, one foot directly in front of the other, standing nice and tall. Again, if you want to advance this, hands on the shoulders, crossing over the chest. If you need one hand on the chair, hold up to the chair. If you need two, try challenging yourself by taking one hand off the chair or just a couple of fingers, whatever you're able to do. If hands over chest is still not enough advanced for you, you want another progression, 
hands out in front as if you're holding something. I can think about a basketball. I enjoy playing basketball in free time. And rotation, keeping the hips in place. Again, that chair is always there if you need it. I'll be using that chair every once in a while. My balance is not perfect, that's for sure. I've got plenty of balance work to do for myself. Find the modification that feels best for you. Hold this position for a couple more seconds. Excellent. Separate the feet. Take a break here for a second. If you need to sit down at all during this, please hit pause, take a break, sit down, and then when you're ready, stand back up, hit play, and we'll get started again. We're going to go into some single leg balance, and we have three different moves we're going to do, if not four, for single leg balance. So we'll do some moves in between so that way we don't wear out our legs completely on single leg balance. So let's start with just basic single leg balance. One foot on the ground, one foot lift up as high as you can. Now if you can, get your knee all the way up to even with your hip. If you're unable to, just keep it off the ground, wherever's comfortable, wherever that may be. Again, chair is nice and close to you, so you have that to hold on to if need be. Now if you have one hand on the chair, I ask, especially during this move, you don't death grip it. I don't want any white knuckles. So try to relax on there, relax your hand on there, and focus on your hip and quad muscles and leg muscles to hold you up. You can place your hands wherever you would like. I like mine in the prayer position. That's my favorite position to hold for balance. But you're free to put your hands on the side or on the front or wherever is comfortable for you so that way you feel most confident in this balance move. Go ahead and relax down. Switch sides, same thing. Try to lift that leg up as high as you can. Holding this balance position. For those of you who hear the bell, uh, the music in the background, I know it's not quite appropriate for the type of exercise we're doing, but we're trying to use copyright free music for. The YouTube videos um, so I will be playing this kind of stuff on most things that we do so if you don't like it I apologize um, look forward to other stuff that we can find eventually that's a little more a little more calm a little more peaceful than the upbeat stuff especially when balancing go ahead and put your foot back down separate your feet again take a break here for a second and we're going to go into some weight transfers for this weight transfer what we're going to work on is our heel toe walking pattern. If you have a cane or a walker or any other type of walking device, it's very easy to become flat footed where you don't do the normal walking heel to toe pattern. So what I'm gonna do is show you a basic way that you can practice that to get back into it. If you've lost that ability to do heel to toe walking or if your balance is not great when you're walking, something you can do to help improve that. So one foot in front of the other, separated. I don't want them one foot in front of the other like the tandem stance. Keep them separated. And I don't want them waist over. I don't want you into a lunge. This is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a normal walking distance apart. So I've got about my stride length here. And what you're going to do is lean your body forward, transfer the weight to the front leg, back leg, you're going to lift up on your toes. Now transfer the weight back to the rear leg, front, front leg comes up, onto the heel, and forward, and back, transferring that weight, activating our leg muscles, working on our balance, and improving our heel-toe walking pattern. You can also do this holding onto a chair. It's perfectly fine as long as you feel comfortable with holding on um, over not holding on to anything. And plus, if you already have a walker or use any type of walking device, Holding on to that and practicing this position will help you know how it's going to feel when you're actually holding on to it and you have to walk. Couple more movements here. Excellent. Let's switch sides. Same thing. Other foot in front for a normal stride length. 
transferring the weight forward, up on the toes, transfer weight back on the heels. Again, that chair is right next to you if you need it, or if you're holding on to it, that's okay as well. Excellent, keep moving, working on that walking pattern. If you like to advance this a little more, try going just a little bit faster with your weight transfer. If you're comfortable with the steel toe walking pattern. Couple more movements. There's three, two, and one. Excellent. Separate the feet again. We're going to go back into single leg balance. We're going to make this a little more difficult. We're going to do some hip rotation. So lifting up one leg, just like we did a single leg, and now rotating out and coming back and keep the shoulders square. So that way we're not rotating our whole body. I just want you to rotate your hips and activate your hip muscles. Again, placing the hands wherever it's comfortable. Now this is difficult to do. Feel free to place your toes on the ground and rotate in and out. This is still activating the hip. It's a still difficult to do. It's still going to improve your balance because you're on your toes, but it's not going to be as difficult as if your foot's off the ground. Now, if you're feeling tired because we've been doing a lot of work so far, grab your chair, have a seat, keep your leg off the ground, rotate out and back in. This is still going to be activating the hip. It's not going to be as much balance, but at least you'll be able to activate the hip. Please choose a modification that feels best for you. If you feel like you're going to lose your balance, you're going to notice me doing this a couple times because I'm not very well balanced in this position. My foot's going to tap the ground every once in a while to make sure that I keep my balance and I don't fall over. That's perfectly fine. It's okay to tap your foot to the ground. Let's do three more movements. Two and three. Excellent. Switch sides, same thing. Lifting up on one foot, one this position, and hip rotations. Please choose the modification out of the three that were given for you, that works best for you. Again, please, if you feel like you're going to lose your balance, tap your foot on the ground when you feel good, ready to lift up and move again. And we got five more. There's three, two, and one. Excellent. Rest that foot back down. We've got one more balance move. We're going to do a move called rock the boat. This is going to be another weight transfer. It's going to be more single leg work as well, but it's going to be more weight transfer work than it will be like we did the last one for single leg. So I'm going to move my chair just out of the way a bit. You can see what I'm doing, but please feel free to stand completely behind your chair if you want something to hold on to. So rocking the boat, we're going to lean sideways, transfer the weight, let the other leg come off the ground, hold this position, and then rock other side. Have that chair next to you all the time. You can hold on to it. And rock, hold, and rock. side, hold it, and rock to the other side again, hold this position, switch, rock the boat, if you've ever been on a boat in a storm, I've never been personally, but if you have been, I'm sure you know what this feels like very well.
Rock again. Let's do three more. So here's three. And three. Rock. Two. And two. And last one. Here's one. Rock the boat. Have that chair next to you. PB. And rock. Hold it. Three. Two. One. Relax. Good work. Grab your chair. Have a seat again. We're going to do some stretching. And you are done. Congratulations. Well done. You've worked hard. I know my hips are feeling it from that rock the boat, especially the hip rotations. So good work today. Thank you for coming and participating. Let's do some stretching before you leave. Sit as far forward as you can in your chair. Lean back against the back rest of your chair. Pull one knee into your chest. If this is too much of a stretch for you, maybe it's a little uncomfortable, sit forward up in your seat and pull your knee in. This is not going to be as much of a stretch as if you're leaning back. Also be sure to note that all stretches should be pain free. If any of these stretches are hurting, please relax a little bit more. Stretching should not be painful. If the stretching hurts, that means your, uh, your muscles are activating, so that way your muscles don't overstretch and they're stopping you from well, we're stretching. So, um, if that's starting to happen, you're actually not gaining or losing anything. You're doing more damage than you are good. So make sure everything that we do for stretching is pain free. Go ahead and switch sides. Same thing. Pull that knee into your chest. Relax down, sit back up, make sure your back's off the chair and shoulders are in place, chest up. Take one heel, place it on the ground. I know my foot's a little bit out of frame again, I apologize for that. But make sure your heel is on the ground and you're pulling your toes back towards you, chest up straight, shoulders back. Hinge at the hips, lean forward just enough to where you feel a light stretch in your calf and hamstrings. Make sure you're breathing the whole time during our stretching. Don't hold your breath, try to relax, take some deep breaths. Excellent. Let's switch sides. Other heel on the ground. Pull the toes back towards you. Chest up. Hinge at the hips. Excellent. Sit back up. Let's do our hip stretch. If you've seen any of my other videos or any of Savannah's previous videos, you'll know some of the modifications for this hip stretch, but let's do a quick recap of those so that way you're familiar with them before we start. So you're going to place your foot on top of your knee for a complete stretch. If this is too difficult, whether it be difficult to get your foot up in this position, you have hip pain or have had a hip replacement, go ahead and place knee over knee and lean forward. You're still going to be stretching the piriformis hip muscle, or if these are both too difficult for you, maybe not at that point, maybe not as flexible, go ahead and place your ankles over the top of each other, cross your ankles, pull your feet back, lean forward. Please choose the modification out of those three that feels best for you and hold this position. Again, try to make sure you're breathing, take some deep breaths, try to relax. If you want more of a stretch than what we're doing right here, Go ahead and lean forward just a bit. I'm not going to be wanting to show you that stretch um, modification because I'm not very flexible. So this is about it for me. Excellent. Switch sides. Same thing. Choose the modification of the three that feels best for you and is most comfortable. Make sure it's completely pain free and hold this position. Excellent. Relax down. One more stretch. We're going to do our lower back just because that's a very feel-good stretch. And it's always good to do after you've been standing for a while. So open up the legs just enough to have plenty of room down to the ground. Bring your arms up in the air. Take a nice deep breath in. Breathe out on the way down. Come down to the ground as low as you can go. If all the way down to the ground is too difficult for you this time, 
Please place your elbows on your knees, holding this position as best and as comfortably as you can. If you are able, come down to the ground as low as possible. Taking some deep breaths, relaxing, holding this position for just a couple more seconds. Roll back up nice and slow. Excellent, good work everyone. Thank you for participating in this quick balance course. Um, please keep practicing to improve your balance and know what you can and can't do and make sure, uh, especially for some of these exercises like balance, um, that you're writing down or remembering what you did before so that way when you improve, you can see all the improvements which will help you not only uh, keep your confidence up that you're doing well with your exercise and you're seeing improvements, uh, but also let you know where you started so that way eight weeks later when you look, you can remember where you came from so that way you know what you've got, all the uh, all that you've accomplished. So have a good rest of your day, a good night, whatever it may be, and we will talk to you all later.